There was a mighty nation, blessed above all of creation. It was a rare and precious pearl. Conceived in faith and liberty, home of the brave, land of the free. It was the envy of the world. But this shining city on a hill has turned from the Creator's will and let evil take control. Now the reckless men who lead them want to strip away their freedom and to steal their very soul. Now it's smoke and mirrors, switch and bait, criticize and confiscate and let the guilty walk away. In this once righteous, godly nation, in the halls of education, they forbid a child to pray. They say we need to spread the wealth. They pretend to guard the health of the feeble and the poor. While the hand they hold behind their backs confuses and conceals the fact that the wolf is at the door. There's an unseen hand. Welcome back. Thank you, the Republic. Dirty Uncle Sam. Truth Radio broadcast on RBN. Well, folks, uh, I spread the word. We're going to have a special guest today. Now, we've heard a lot for and against many of these uh, bits of information that have come out of Burns, Oregon, and the people that are taking a stand for justice, for what's right. That's how I was raised to live, to stand for what was just and what was right, and to let every man have his say. So I don't care what anyone says. This man that's going to speak, he's going to speak from his heart. And he's going to tell you what, who he is, what he represents. Now, some of my research and Bruce's research go back to the original 13th Amendment. I think that I'll probably let this man explain that to you uh, because you can probably do it better. So without any further ado, Judge Doucette, welcome to Resurrect the Republic. Hey, thank you, Tom. How are you? I'm um, very and good. You know, I, everybody wants to make a big deal out of calling me a judge. And I have to first explain to people that, you know, a common law judge is not like an admiralty court judge. We have absolutely no power, and it's absolutely not any glamorous position to be in. I cannot turn out a single order by myself, not one. Um, all of the orders that I turn out have to come from a grand jury of 25 members that were unanimous on their decision. So uh, for any of you that really think that the title of being a judge is a uh, common law judge is glamorous and powerful and all of that, well, I hate to burst your bubble, but it's really not that way. <laughs> right. I, I, I gather as much, and uh, that's what a lot of the misconception has been out there. Uh, uh, a lot of people thinking that, well, they're, they're claiming to be the same ruling authority or the same class of the judges that are sitting on the courts. That uh, People have been um, so propagandized over the course of time. Why don't you explain to us uh, uh, what exactly it is that you stand for, sir? <laughs> Um, you know, I stand for the Constitution. Um, mm -hmm. I stand um, for um, everything that's right and truthful and everything that is the opposite of that I am against. Oh, you know, Lord, we, uh, have mercy. We have to crucify you now. <laughs> <laughs> that, how, how, what horrible things to stand for that people should listen to. But go ahead, Judge. <laughs> well, you know, um, we have a serious problem with this country, people. And, you know, that problem is coming from the very courts and the very government um, that we the people created. Now, um, why does the common law and the superior court have so much power? And why are the current court systems fighting that and trying to make it look like it's a farce and it's nothing and, and it's not important and go away, don't look behind the curtain? Well, let me yes. explain that to you. 
Your common law courts are your Seventh Amendment courts by the Constitution. The government, for many years, has tried to do away with them. Well, why did they try to do away with them? Your superior courts and your grand juries and your sheriffs were all supposed to be originally the one arm of the justice system that was separate from the government. It was always to remain outside of the government. And why? Because we, the people, created this government, okay? When you create something, that means you have complete jurisdiction over it, and Amen. it has no jurisdiction over you. Do you understand that? Absolutely, whatever you I agree. Create, whatever you create, you have jurisdiction over. It doesn't have jurisdiction over you. Now, they work so hard to get rid of these common law courts because these common law courts are truly your constitutional courts of the people. The decisions are not made by the judges, but from the very people in the community where you live. And you are the one that are supposed to tell the government what to do, not the government telling you what to do. Yes, sir. And, well, um, uh, that's exactly how I feel, and, and I think that what's under attack from critical theory Marxists is the truth. They try and, and, and claim a narrative, and they, they, what they rob from the people is the truth. That's, um, uh, that, yeah. I just you said, this is Lori. Um, Hi, I wanted Lori. To, how are you? To, uh, fine. I wanted to reinforce something. I'm going to kind of be the one saying, well, where does your authority come from? One of the key things okay. that we've been asked for a lot, and you did say it, but I really want to enhance where does your authority and legislation law come from so the people can understand that it's not just coming out of thin air. A lot of people don't have time for the research, but if we point out to them where they can find it, then it they can is, stand up and find oh, out. Yeah. It is your Seventh Amendment in your original Constitution, not the government's Constitution, because that is a phony Constitution. I guess for me to fully have people understand that, we have been taught the wrong history and we all need to learn at least a little bit of the correct history and we need to do it now and we need to do it by ourselves so that you know I can tell you truth my truth but my truth doesn't become your truth until you see it for yourself okay and I, I saw that because I did hold in my hand the original 13th amendment in the library from a past Texas governor so I know that it does um, exactly this is Lori Anderson. Can I chime in for just a moment? Absolutely. Hi, Lori. How are you? Hi. How is everybody doing today? Blessed. Amen to that. I just wanted to chime in. And um, even in their corporate constitution, okay, even in their corporate, the, the bylaws of the United States, it even says in their Bill of Rights in Amendment 7, it says, in suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall otherwise be reexamined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. So even in their corporate, even in their fictitious constitution, they mention that it has to be tried in common law, and they want people not to understand, read that, or, or even know that common law is truly the law of the land. So I will let and you continue speaking, Lori, but I just wanted to pull that out. And thank you for that, Lori. And you said one other important thing that actually I want you to read that again in a minute. It says okay. the grand jury's decision cannot be challenged by any other court in the land, including the Supreme Correct. Court of the United States. When the grand jury here, here. puts out a decision, it is final. You can't appeal it. And why? Because these are coming from the people. We are a republic. Right. We are not a democracy. And the people are self-governing. We created the government. We have complete jurisdiction over it. It has no jurisdiction on us. So, Lori, please read that part again. 
Absolutely. It says, in suit at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. Now, that right there is the reason that your government wants you to believe that common law is bullshit and it's, it's um, you know, we don't have... Well, we're, we're live on the air, uh, Judge. Can oh, you... Uh, <laughs> sorry. It's bull and that it has no power because it ha- is the ultimate power. And it has complete power over them and they don't want you to know that. They want that right. secret cap. Right. And the, what people need to understand is the common law grand jury is one that holds the power. The judge is, is the mediator. The judge is the one that sits there and uh, addresses uh, the, anything that may be unconstitutional. But the jury is the one that makes the decision. The jury is the one with the power, not the judge, unlike in these admiralty courts. So, you know, for people to truly understand what happened um, with this whole thing, let's give people a little bit of a history lesson, and then this make, make this clear to them. Um, and people, we need to understand that this is not a war of flesh. This is a spiritual war. And not mm-hmm. only is it a spiritual war, but the very evil people that are doing all of this are throwing it right in your face. And you're not looking at the truth for yourself. Um, Let's examine the very meaning of legal, because everything that the government does with its statutes and codes is legal. All right? Mm -hmm. And if you Google the 1823 Britannica definition of legal, (laughs) it will say the undoing of God's law. Mm -hmm. Yes, people, that's what it says, the undoing of God's law. And what's the definition of lawful? In obedience with God's law. So Mm -hmm. I want you guys to consider this for a minute, that what they're doing is they're creating another God for you to follow. Because one of the Ten Commandments says that you're not to follow. um, You're only to follow one God. Well, when a government makes it legal to lie to the people, well, what does God's law have to say? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Well, you know, Hitler did everything that was legal, too. Um, I'm sorry, Lloyd? I said, you know, Hitler did everything that was legal, too. It just wasn't lawful. And I believe um, uh, Thomas Jefferson, with his reasoning in the Kentucky Resolutions of 1798, he said, if the government created by this compact was not made, the exclusive or final judge of the extent of the powers delegated to itself, since that would have made its discretion and not the Constitution the measure of its powers. But that, as in all other cases of compact among powers having no common judge, each party has an equal right to judge for itself as a well of infractions as of the mode and measure of redress. Amen. Amen. And this is this um, is pure constitutional law, folks. Uh, for those of you listening out there, uh, we have a, a high number of callers in on this conversation, so we can't take direct calls. But if you direct your question, if you have any questions, at boardop at republicbroadcasting dot org. If you have any questions, shoot us in, and we will try our best to get to them before the end of the show. Um, so <clears throat> you derive your your authority uh, from the Constitution itself. Which to well, me, I don't have any authority. You know, if, if people really want to know where the authority is, and if they want to have all the power, then these people need to get involved with the grand juries. The grand jury has all the power, people. That's where it is. You know, um, that is where the true power of the people is. It's not being a judge. Um, it's not being anything else. We are a republic. We're self-governing. If you want the power, you already have it. Sit on a grand jury, form a grand jury, find a grand jury, make sure they're lawful, because everything that we do is lawful and peaceful. 
And if everybody will get involved and will um, set their grand juries up in their counties. Now, I'm going to I'm going to speak a little bit about NLA. A lot of th- a lot of people don't realize that uh, the NLA actually has, um, with the very people in every county and state, has set up lawful grand juries in every county and every state. Now, here's my caution with the NLA. Um, uh, Colorado and Florida have had their grand juries and their superior courts up running longer than anyone. And the reason that we have had ours up and running is because our grand juries originally came from the NLA. And John Duresh, um, when we started, when I was brought on to this, um, they asked me to join the NLA and become part of the group here in Colorado. We don't really have a group, but to, to help out with things here. And one of the things I looked at was how the NLA was doing things they do some things that are amazing. And the people that are involved in the NLA across the country are amazing people. They're people that are off the couch, they're standing up, and they're trying to do the right thing. Here is my card for all of you, and I'll make this as simple as possible. When we started doing the right thing in Colorado, um, the NLA, John Duresh, tried to fire our grand jury. Our lawfully seated grand jury in Colorado, he thought he had the audacity to, follow, to fire. Well, um, it actually was a blessing because we all left the NLA and started doing the right thing and figuring that, that out ourselves. He also tried to fire the um, grand juries in Florida. Well, that is why Florida and Colorado are leading the rest of the country as far as, you know, what to do and how to do it and actually getting results. So for any of you that are out there in the NLA, you are great people. I commend you for standing up and doing the right thing. Now remember, this is your grand jury and your county. No one from New York or any other county has the right to tell you what to do with your grand jury. I yield. That, yeah, you know what? That would that's actually kind of the whole point, uh, is so that one body can't take control and usurp the will of uh-huh. the many. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. One of the things, and, and, and nobody's knocking down the NLA. It's somebody has to start it. A group started it. But anytime a group, a group, and not the people on their own get involved, I think this is what the judge is trying to say. Steer away from some associations, the foundations. That's where the core problems are and where they can be infiltrated. They get heavy money, and people think they can come in and take control. Um, anytime there's a group or foundation, they may have the information. Please listen to them, but do it on your own. If you, if you bring in a group, they're going to strong arm you. You must do it as a community on your own without a name and just be who you are. It's the hardest thing to do, but when you stand before God, you have to do it on your own. So if you're going to have to do that one day, you can do this today. That's all and I'm that's saying. very well said. Wow. And, wow. And I would like to make one other point. You know, I've invited everyone to the, um, the nationwide judges call um, on Wednesday night, and you'll find that we're, we're not a group. We don't have a leader. I, I don't lead it. Nobody leads it. We are a group of people that come together that help one another set grand juries up and common law courts up in their counties and their states, but no one is in charge. And no one t- tries to take charge. It's all about helping one another, um, you know, with what they need to do and how they need to do it. And people all over the country put their input in in. It's truly amazing. You'll you mean, see uh, that you mean there, is, love thy, there is no love thy neighbor, Judge? I'm sorry? You mean love thy neighbor? Exactly. You know, if everybody <laughs> learned to do everything by the Bible, there would be no need for government. We would all be treating one another um, the way we should be treating one another, and there wouldn't be any of these issues. Right? Amen From to that. Childhood. Amen to that. We have to break. We'll be right back. Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam.
We are the American Freedom Party. This is the most urgent time in the history of Western civilization. In the year 1900, white people of European descent comprised 35% of the world population. Today it is less than 9% and falling fast. Europe is being overrun with Middle Eastern immigrants, and America's founding stock is rapidly being replaced with third world peoples from around the globe. For the last 50 years, every influential institution in this nation, our schools and universities, our media, our churches and our employers, have promoted policies and principles that teach whites to be ashamed of their great heritage and birthright. We, who in the 1950s, the 1960s, and 1970s were the world's dominant force, are now so afraid of being called racist that we were quailing towards irrelevance and extinction. Join the American Freedom Party today. Reach us at theamericanfreedomparty.us or call us at 701-317-5317. Paid for by the American Freedom Party. This is a public announcement. Be ready to copy down a website address at the end of this message. Here's your chance to own land in our great nation for as little as $350 down and $99 a month. At the end of a year, you own it. This is your chance to own a piece of New Mexico in the foothills of a beautiful mountain range that's a national park. Yet a short drive to town, a perfect place to camp or own as an emergency retreat for your family for generations. $350 down, $99 a month. Go to landho.tv now. Similar sized parcels in the same development have sold for up to $15 thousand dollars some even more folks we bought this land right and can pass the savings on to you purchase online via paypal at landho.tv other listeners have already visited and purchased from our website so we know there's a keen interest don't let this be a missed opportunity for you land that's yours in less than a year for an incredible 350 down and 99 a month inventory is getting seriously scarce so visit our website today land in sunny new mexico for 350 down and 99 a month landho.tv l-a-n-d-h-o.tv Dr. Joel Wallach, author of the famous health lecture, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, presents his newest book, Epigenetics. Epigenetics is required reading for the very survival of Americans, and yes, all of humanity. Modern man has bet on the wrong horse to save them from disease and pestilence. The medical system has failed us fearfully. Join the health revolution. Buy Epigenetics today and receive a free membership to purchase all the products that Dr. Joel Wallach formulated at wholesale prices and receive a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. All this for only $25 plus shipping and handling. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. Again, that's just $25 plus shipping and handling. And you'll receive the new book, Epigenetics, a free membership and a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. Welcome back. Resurrected Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam, Truth Radio Broadcast. Uh, on the line with uh, Lori Anderson, Texas 101, myself, and Judge DeSet. Uh, we have our first question um, from the audience. Uh, Judge, uh, the question was, can you please define NLA or National Liberty Alliance and what it is? Um, you know, National Liberty Alliance was set up to... Um, to help restore uh, common law back to um, this country. And they really, again, I will state, they have done an amazing job at some things. Um, And, you know, the last I knew, and and this was a couple of years ago, um, they actually had um, lawful grand juries uh, constituted in every county and every state in the United States. And that's very important. There's a lot of work that's already been done, people. Um, so, you know, I would encourage you all to um, get in there and get involved with that. Just don't take your orders from anyone. It's your county. Um, I hear that. NLA has a lot of good resources on how to um, train your grand jury administrators. They do a lot of things right. 
So I'm really, um, even though I disagree with some things, I'm not trying to cut them down. But at the end of the day, this is your county. This is your grand jury. You are the ones that have complete control over it, not someone back in New York. You don't have to follow their rules or, or any of that stuff. We've all been so brainwashed and so used to being led by people. Stand up and do it yourself, people. Are you uh, amen, amen to that. Uh, I can, think I, that can I? Yeah, go ahead, Lori. Go. I was going to say, can I, can I add to that? Because I think that was a wonderful um, explanation, but... That reminds me of the Prince versus United States 1997 Supreme Court case where they said, quote, we held in New York that Congress cannot compel the states to enact or enforce a federal regulatory program. Today we hold that Congress cannot circumvent that prohibition by conspiring, conscripting the state's officers directly. The federal government may neither issue directives requiring the states to address particular problems, nor command the state's officers or those of their political subdivisions to administer or enforce a federal regulatory program. It matters not whether policymaking is involved, and no case-by-case -case weighing of the burdens or benefits is necessary. Such commands are fundamentally incompatible with our constitutional system of dual sovereignty. So I wanted to add that in there because what he just said, he is so correct. No one from New York can tell somebody in North Carolina how to decide to enforce or not enforce a law. And so I feel like, you know, individuals who are not aware of the, the Prince versus United States in 1997 Supreme Court case, you need to look that up. It would be very informative to help back up everything that we're telling you on this show today and everything that Judge Doucette is explaining as well. May I comment? Yes. I, you yeah, know, Lori, um, Lori, you really need to be you really need to consider becoming a um, Superior Court judge because that's what it takes right there. Getting in and being able to do the research and find out what's real and what's not. So right. I compliment you on that. I concur. Well, thank you, and I will consider it. Well, we need everybody that's willing to, you know, stand up and doing this. I, this is our, our country, our government people. We have got to be the, stand, the ones to stand up and clean up this mess. We are all responsible for, for what we create. Yeah, and like we Frankenstein. A monster. <laughs> Frankenstein. We created what... a monster, and now we've got to fix it, and it's not going to fix itself. Amen to that. The only I, way this is I, going I to happen is if everybody gets off the couch and goes, okay, God, we created a mess here. How do we clean it up? And we all come together and we figure out how to cool it up. I hear that. Well, we'll be back after a few more words from our sponsors. Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN. This is the most transparent administration in history. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not, or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855-2-KEEP-IT today. 
Hello, my name is Don Wiskin from HeartDrop.com, the distributors of Extendivite, the number one heart drop that people have been raving about for years. Every February, for the last 16 years, HeartDrop.com has had a heart month sale to help you stay heart healthy. For only $115 plus shipping and handling, you can get a four-month supply of Extendivite in either liquid or capsule form to help you get started on your path to better health. Now is the time to stock up, order what you need, stay heart healthy all year with the number one heart drop, Extendivite. To order your Extendivite, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website, heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendovite. Extend your life with Extendovite. Are you or someone you know suffering from high blood pressure, cholesterol, or chest pains? Are you looking for a more natural way to overcome these health challenges? Extendivite is made from herbs known to help with these symptoms. Made from garlic, cayenne, hawthorn, and four other herbs, Extendivite goes to work detoxifying heavy metals and killing fungus and virus to enhance your overall health. For only $69.95 plus shipping and handling for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid, you too can begin on your path to better health. For more information, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body. Normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Hey, no, Back. Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam, Truth Radio Broadcast on RBN. Well, folks, uh, you know, I think that the, the one of the best messages to take from this is that we all know we've been systematically dumbed down and lied to. We've pointed that out, proven it 150 times over. All one has to do is look at Common Core uh, resources as to, uh, you know, a lot of what they teach about our Constitution itself. But we have a situation in Burns, Oregon going on, and I would like to ask, uh, my question is, how is what the grand jury is about and what it functions for, how is it applicable to Oregon, sir? Um, you know, that's part of the reason that I went down to Oregon and met not only with the people in the town and the ranchers, but also um, uh, Ammon and his group and the Committee of Safety. Um, the only way to clean up all of the corruption that's gone on in that county, with the county, the state, and the government, um, without having this, you know, um, be in courts for years and years and years to come with, you know, uh, judgments and appeals and all of that stuff is truly to put it in the people's hands, which is where it belongs. Again, we created this mess. It's up to us to clean this mess up. And so, and that is what the government is afraid of right now. Um, I'm in charge of that grand jury out there, and we are constantly having to move the grand jury for their protection. They're getting threats. Um, and those threats, 
you know, in my opinion, they're coming from the government and from the people that don't want to see real law take place because there's a lot of people that have done wrong that are going to get indicted. And I feel that this goes all the way to the White House. It's not just local and burns there. And so a lot of people have a lot of motivations to try to go in there, clamp down on that poor small town, um, and silence them. And it's not going to happen. Judge, I also have another yes. question because I'm the curious one here. Now, the Committee of Safety, I'm here in rumors and I have not had time to research it, so this is why I'm going to ask this question. Isn't or is not the Committee of Safety also another common law uh, way to take the country back? That's my question because everyone says things about the Committee of Safety, but nobody says that this is a way also to start in conjunction with the grand juries. Well, let me explain that to you. Uh, Committee of Safety goes all the way back before our founding fathers. And our founding fathers used the Committee of Safety to um, write the Constitution and do all of the things that they, that they did. And in Burns, this was done correctly. The people in Burns stood up and said, we're tired of this corruption. We need to come up with a solution to fix it all. And even with the government's blessing, um, the Committee of Safety there was elected by the people. And so this is an it was the Committee of Safety group. to determine the best route to clean this mess up. And they chose to go with the um, uh, Amendment 7 uh, common law grand juries and, and superior courts to do it. So the Committee well, of Safety is actually a lawful form of... Um, they are elected by the people of Burns. Yes, Yes, and, and I'd like to point one thing out here, too. The Committee of Safety voted, and they were three to ask uh, the people at the refuge to leave and three to wait and stay. Uh, so that's a split decision, and I just want to point out something. You have the actual people who, who, who convened this lawful body, uh, and they all said they came to a split decision. Now, who decides to go in and then effect arrests? over top of the lawful order of the people. Well, and, and one other thing that I want to make a comment on as well, and that is I went down there um, and I met with the townspeople, I met with the ranchers, um, and I met with hundreds of them. And I will be honest with you, I could not find a single person in that town that wanted um, the uh, famines to leave the reservation. They were afraid of two things and two things only. One, they were afraid of the local government and the FBI. And the second thing that they told me they were afraid of is that they would leave the refuge before the corruption in the government got cleaned up and the government and the um, Bureau of Land Management would come back and punish them for it. That was the real people's fear. That's what I experienced, too, when I asked people uh, on the ground. Store owners who would not go on the record uh, and say uh, what they wanted to say because they feared the backlash that would come upon them. That is not uh, a constitutional free republic. Uh, that is, that is a, a, an oligarchy uh, of sorts and a tyranny. When people fear the government, you have tyranny. When the government fears the people, you have liberty, and they've called fearing the people now domestic terrorism. Right, and Tom, if you remember that the the vote happened before the fire chief found out that the FBI was um, dressed normal and at the armory and had lied to him. So that was way before they had realized that a lot of the FBI agents were were posing as. Um, whether they were posing as patriots or, or plain clothes, if you will, trying to seem as if they were something they were not. So a lot came out after um, that vote and changed a lot of uh, that split as well. Yes, that's will, a good point. I will tell you something. Uh, Chris, in my opinion, the, the uh, fire chief that resigned, that should be, he should be the true sheriff of that county. He actually judge, truly has judge. the balls to stand up and to you, do the right thing. 
absolutely right. I, when, when Chris Ann Hall was giving her presentation, uh, I was there, and I went over to the fire chief, and I introduced myself, and we had a short conversation. And the same thing that you just said is what I told him. I said, sir, I believe that you're an honorable man. I believe that you're a well-respected man, and you should be uh, who is sheriff of, of this town because I, I truly believe uh, that, that he would not allow any bloodshed on his watch. And he said as much. That is the true definition of a peace officer to me. Well, and I've gotten to know Chris, and he truly is an honorable man. I don't think that the people could get him to take that position, but really he is the one that should be doing it. Yeah, I concur with that. Now, he's such a good man. Now, he said to me, uh, one of the things he said to me, he said, you know, I've threatened um, and, and all of that. He said, uh, but I live the same way that I always have, and I'm going to live the same way that I always have. Um, I mean, he's one of those rocks in a community uh, that, that truly needs to, to someone to look up to and to, uh, to look to. Uh, I believe that he should absolutely run for sheriff. I would do everything that I well, could to support for, that. And for those that are not aware, I'm... Uh, uh, Chris is on the Committee of Safety. He was elected by the people. That's correct. Mm -hmm. so there are some very good numbers on this Committee of Safety. I have another question, inquiring minds here. If people do not want to go to an association in L.A., where can people in the community go to research the Committee of Safety and the grand juries, the people's common law grand juries? Where would you say to start researching so that they can learn and, and decide on their own um, what to do? Um, uh, actually, uh, uh, Roger Dow uh, Dowell um, with the Florida Grand Jury, they've actually put together a website for that. And I'm trying to think of the name uh, for that right now, and I can't think of it, but I will. But um, remember, your, your grand juries. And how a grand jury is supposed to be run, um, it's one of the oldest laws um, around. And it actually is the Magna Carta that um, tells you explicitly how to run a grand jury, how it set it up, what its functions are, and what it can and can't do. And that goes all the way back to 1215 people. Yes, long it does. before our government. Yes, as a matter of fact, that's. Next. That's where there, our founders um, built the architecture of what was built. It, it was built and based right. upon, and I try and tell people this all the time, they don't realize what makes us what we are, and that is that's, what was what was issued to the on the end of a sword. <laughs> so if people the, really want to understand, um, you know, and see it from the source themselves and not somebody else's interpretation, Magna Carta. And right. I've got one question because I do look at everything. The seal that's on the grand jury paperwork that's been filed has a seal. And if you look at the words and, and look at the definitions, but the date threw me off. And I went, hmm, the Magna Carta. I know that in the Constitution it does say we bring our law in through England, common law through England. It actually says that in the Constitution. Why was the seal chosen with the 1215 on it? And why was that particular version of the Magna Carta chosen? Because there are several versions. Can you explain how that relates to our country? Because most people think in 1776 we pulled away and we beat and defeated all of that. But law flows through. You have to have a way in a treaty or something to, to keep law going. Can you kind of explain to people why that is? Because it's very confusing. Well, um, you know, of the different versions that out there that are out, are out there, uh, the twelve fifteen version is the correct version um, from our research. Now, people are <coughs> are free to do their own and and uh, debate that if they want. But um, and um, uh, you know that is, and it says right in the Magna Carta that is a forever law. That is not something that can ever be taken away. And mm -hmm. that is really not a law for the people, okay? 
and people need to understand that. Um, the Constitution is not the law for the people. It's a restraint um, on government. The law for us is our inherent rights that come from God. Each and every one of us are to follow our inherent rights. The Constitution protects our inherent rights from the government, just like the Magna Carta protects our rights from the government. And if you so understand what the Magna Article Carta really was... The lawful rebellion, as they're doing in the UK. Yeah. If you understand why the Magna Carta was written, it was because the king didn't want to get killed. And right. he said, okay, I'll make this agreement with you people, that if any of my... Um, uh, if any of my uh, uh, bill collectors or, you know, whatever they had in that time, if any of those people harm you at all, then here are your rights and what you can do with them. And I will guarantee those rights as long as you don't kill me, my wife, and my family. That's what the magnitude right. is. And, and one of the things that I think is important uh, in this conversation to remember is even in their, their corporate constitution, it's in pursuance thereof. And that is a very important statement because even in their, cor con their corporate constitution, they have to go in pursuance of those limitations of the organic constitution, of the Articles of Confederation, of the Magna Carta. And, and the in pursuance thereof really kind of binds all of that together. That's a good point. So, um, I, I, all I think of these people... things are the laws for the government to follow. And, Tom, yes. I don't right. know how much time we have on this show, but, you know, I would like to get into some good news on this and actually discover, I mean, and discuss the, the 13th Amendment and what that really means to all the people. You pick the time when you want me to go into that more, please. Uh, go, go ahead. Uh, we, we only have an hour show, so get as much as you can. You can come back as many times as you'd like, but go ahead, Judge. Okay. Um, all right. So I have written um, uh, articles on this, and you can find uh, copies of those on my Facebook page. Um, Tom and Lori can get those all out to you. But there's some very important things that have happened, and it's only with the grace of our Heavenly Father that we have really been freed from all of this mess, and people aren't aware of that yet. And that's why I want to talk about the 13th Amendment and what that means. Um, to understand, first of all, we have to go into a little, a couple of little things. And we have our original constitution. Our constitution was, um, was designed by the people for the government. The government was never given the right to change that constitution. And what the government is using is their constitution. You have to remember the government it's the United States of America, Inc. They are a corporation. When yes. they were formed, they supposedly said they adopted the Constitution or that they were using the Constitution. That is not exactly correct. We know the government doesn't always tell us the truth. Um, so <laughs> keep that in mind. You have one Constitution that the United States of America, Inc. uses that is nothing more than a corporate charter. Corporate charter, they mm -hmm. can change at will. They don't need the people's permission to do that. The original Constitution, they cannot change. They can only be changed by the people. So mm -hmm. with those facts in mind, let's look what happened. What happened was, is in 1809, the, our founding fathers got wind of the fact that lawyers and our members were trying to take over the government. And they said, well, this could be very dangerous. And even though the Constitution has um, uh, a section in it for titles of nobility, it wasn't strong enough. It didn't really specify that bar members and dual citizens could not partake in the government. And so they Amen. wanted an amendment that would stop that and not allow mm -hmm. them to take over the government because they already had wind that they were trying to do this. So they came up with the title of the nobility, which is the original 13th Amendment. The 13th mm -hmm. Amendment that the government has in their constitution about slavery, that's bull. Um, mm -hmm. but, and we'll go into that in a minute. But 
So if you guys do your own research, and it's all out there, if you read my document, um, my document points you to the research. You can look at all of the documentation on it, when every um, state ratified it, and all of it. The proof is all there. I believe that for you to see the truth and know the truth, you've got to see it for yourself. But what the 13th Amendment um, uh, means is it has been ratified. It has never been repealed. And that mm -hmm. did not allow for any lawyers or anyone with dual citizenship to take any part in the government or the Justice Department. Um, Amen to that. Not we'll be back. Uh, Judge, we've got to take a quick break. We've got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam. We are the American Freedom Party. This is the most urgent time in the history of Western civilization. In the year 1900, white people of European descent comprised 35% of the world population. Today it is less than 9% and falling fast. Europe is being overrun with Middle Eastern immigrants, and America's founding stock is rapidly being replaced with third world peoples from around the globe. For the last 50 years, every influential institution in this nation, our schools and universities, our media, our churches and our employers have promoted policies and principles that teach whites to be ashamed of their great heritage and birthright. We, who in the 1950s, the 1960s, and 1970s were the world's dominant force, are now so afraid of being called racist that we were quailing towards irrelevance and extinction. Join the American Freedom Party today. Reach us at theamericanfreedomparty.us or call us at 701-317-5317. Paid for by the American Freedom Party. Roberts and Roberts Brokerage believes that everyone should have some of their assets in investment grade precious metals. Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted name in precious metals for nearly 40 years. Experienced investors will appreciate our personal service and low prices. If you're new to precious metals, we can help you find the products right for you. Give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, when you're serious about precious metals. Dr. Joel Wallach, author of the famous health lecture, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, presents his newest book, Epigenetics. Epigenetics is required reading for the very survival of Americans, and yes, all of humanity. Modern man has bet on the wrong horse to save them from disease and pestilence. The medical system has failed us fearfully. Join the health revolution. Buy Epigenetics today and receive a free membership to purchase all the products that Dr. Joel Wallach formulated at wholesale prices and receive a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. All this for only $25 plus shipping and handling. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. Again, that's just $25 plus shipping and handling. And you'll receive the new book, Epigenetics, a free membership and a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. Hi, my name is David Merlin from TakeFromCaesar.us. Income is defined in the tax code. All property is a cost, including labor, according to statute. You're deprived of the provisions of Section 83 whenever you pay an income tax on your compensation. According to Section 83, only the excess over the amount paid is gross income. The government can't so much as provide an interpretation of Section 83 of its own. Get your paradigm shift in understanding today at TakeFromCaesar.us. Welcome back, Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam. Folks, you're talking, you're talking to two people that were actually there in Burns, Oregon, and at Mahor. Uh, I would ask that you go to rtrtruthmedia.com. Uh, I appreciate the support uh, that I've gotten. We still have work to do. And I would appreciate if you'd go there. Also, I will put any documents that are shared uh, and any links that are shared so that you can research uh, the common law grand juries for yourself. Uh, we'll be posting those on the RTR Truth Media Twitter account, uh, Facebook page, all that kind of stuff. 
you guys get the point, Google+. Plus. Um, so anyway, Judge, uh, we have a few minutes left, um, and would you like to take us out? Yeah, I, I would like to. Um, the, the one thing or the one question that I kept giving, well, that I had myself and that many people have had, so we've all had these questions as we wake up, and, and that is where do we really go wrong and how do we fix this? And, you know, a lot of great scholars have really researched this to come up with the truth on that. And the truth being the original 13th Amendment was ratified. It's never been repealed. Um, even at the time it was ratified, we had bar members and we had um, dual citizenships um, in our government, in all of our governments. So when that was ratified, that was the last time that we had a lot of a lawful ratification of any amendment. So what that means, people, is that um, in accordance with our Constitution, anything that is um, in conflict with the Constitution is null and void on its face. You can find all kinds of Supreme Court decisions that will back that up. Um, I could list a bunch of them, but I'm not going to try to take the time now. So what that means is our Heavenly Father has pressed the reset button on this whole mess for us. No one person could have done it this beautiful. What it truly means is every statute, code, law, whether it's IRS, traffic, any of those things that have been done since 1819 on are null and void completely. You are restored back to Amen. the original Constitution with the original 13th Amendment. And trust me, only our Heavenly Father could do something that beautiful without a shot being fired. And let me tell you, just to back that up, even uh, many people don't realize this. In the 2015 copy of the Oregon Constitution, Article 1, Section 29, is titled the Nobility, Hereditary Distinctions. Now, it's not worded in the same faction as the original 13th Amendment, but it says, no law shall be passed granting any title of nobility or conferring hereditary distinctions. And that's in, in the 2015 one. And actually, that is in the original Constitution as well, Lori. Um, but, you know, that's why they came up with the 13th Amendment is because they felt that wasn't quite strong enough. Um, right. And, um, and that's why they made the, the 13th Amendment in the first place is um, to be more specific with it. Mm -hmm. But exactly. very good. Yeah. And so um, individuals need to realize that, that a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime that's miller versus united states amen to that all right folks we run out of time but we will be back again resurrect the republic dirty uncle sam truth radio broadcast Lori anderson tom rackabar stewart texas 101 judge Doucette, and bruce ray red see you later